Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley number FBB191 4x4 32D uh, hinge is what this is. I have the hinge removed from the package, and here it is. So this is a FBB191. This is a standard weight, full mortise, five knuckle, ball bearing, stainless steel base material. Um, butt hinge, they call it. This is four by four, that means that the, let's go over the dimensional properties. The overall height is four inch. The overall width is four inch, and we'll talk at length in just a few moments about that size. Because it is a four inch tall hinge and it's considered standard weight, It'll be 130 thousandths thick, or at least that's what the catalog cut sheet likely says. My caliper says it's 135 thousandths, so a little heavy on what it ought to weigh, but nonetheless, that's certainly within range. Two bearing packets are standard on standard weight hinges. If you had a heavy weight hinge, uh, which I don't know that we would do in a four inch wide, four and a half inch for sure, it would be 180 thousandths uh, in a four and a half inch. This will include screws, fasteners. Now, where would you use this hinge? Why would you buy it? What do you need it for? Let's go over that right now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Where might you look to use this hinge? Um, well, it is a confluence of some items that tell me that there's a particular type of client that will end up using this. And what I mean by that is uh, it's probably residential in nature because it's a four inch uh, tall hinge, uh, four inch wide hinge tells me it's probably a standard application. So I, what I mean residential in nature, I mean to say that it's likely not a commercial door and frame. Uh, four inch, four by four would not be typical for that at all. Four and a half, four and a half, four and a half by four, five by four and a half, etc. Larger, taller hinges. Likely a residential application, but one that you're dealing with generally inch and three quarter thick doors. Uh, inch and three eighths doors are not the right uh, door thickness for a four inch hinge. I should say four inch is not the right size hinge for an inch and three eighths door. It's just too large of a hinge. Um, so likely inch and three, most most certainly inch and three quarter thick doors. Probably commercial, uh, residential in nature. The fact that it is a stainless steel base material tells me that there is one of two things happening. They want, the client needs the base material to be non-ferrous, okay? Can't rust, coastal, corrosive environment. Maybe it's an interior application and it is a, uh, a, a steam room in a pool enclosure in a hotel. Um, so you'll have stainless steel used in that type of application. Uh, exterior coastal, exterior anything really, um, high humidity application, or second and less, certainly less common, but nonetheless um, a valid reason is that someone wants the look of stainless. Satin chrome does not look the same as this. Satin nickel, albeit closer to satin stainless steel, does not look the same as this. Someone might want that exact finish of stainless steel. What's interesting is that they have a, a lacquer coating on this, which I never see on stainless steel. Um, that obviously is standard practice for um, for Stanley. Um, so there you go. Solid stainless steel hinge used in likely one of those two applications. Now, let's dissect the part number. So we understand what we're dealing with. We're dealing with an FBB191 in no particular order. That means that this hinge is full mortise. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaves here and here that when the leaves are brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. It means it's a five knuckle hinge. It means it's ball bearing on a standard weight hinge, 130 thousandths. It would have two ball bearing packets, as I said earlier also means inherently that it is standard weight. The 191 means standard weight. If that was a 199, it would be heavyweight. Um, it also means that it is a, uh, a non-ferrous base material. What type, brass, bronze, or stainless, we don't know until we add the 
finish code to it, but 32D then tells us that it is a stainless steel base material hinge. That's just a stamp on the back, that that's an FBB191 that's there. And then, of course, the Stanley logo is here as well. Um, four inch is the height. Four inch, obviously, is the width as well, but the height is the first dimension. So we say that it's four inch tall and four inch wide. Very important to know that the height is the first dimension. Why? Well, it, it is almost never going to really matter that you understand the difference. It's just a four by four. Is it the width first, the height first? It's a coin toss for many people. Me, uh, at one time, <laughs> I, did, I did not understand that the height was the first dimension. Um, this industry is what we call the school of hard knocks. You learn by mistake. Luckily, that mistake wasn't too awful. Uh, client ordered five by four and a half, uh, 20 doors on a job. Two of them were 3670. Industry standard best practice would tell us doors wider than three foot, three foot, three foot six, go with a taller hinge, five inch by five inch hinge. Well, I thought the client meant four and a half by five. So he's like, why did you send me wide throw hinges? I says, I, 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 because that's what you asked for. No, I asked for five by four and a half. I thought it was, I thought it was four and a half by five. The problem is the hollow metal frames were already installed, mortared into the block walls. So there's no changing the doors and frames. Turned out that uh, the doors and frames were convertible from standard to heavyweight. We got the client some heavyweight hinges and felt, and the client felt that that would be sufficient. So luckily, I got out of that easily. My ignorance over what dimension was first was immediately cured that's to be sure why is it that why is that the case well the first dimension is probably the dimension that's more important to know even though they're both important dimensions what dimension would you want first is more of the question when it comes to a door the width is the first dimension the height is the second dimension I need a whole bunch of eight foot doors. Okay, great. Tell me the width first and then tell me the height. The height becomes somewhat secondary. 30236, whatever the case might be. It's also like saying, I need you to drive from point A to point B. Rather than telling you the rate of speed first, why don't I tell you the direction first? That would be the first thing you'd like to know, even though you have to know both pieces of information. Why it's important on hinges, because lots of hinges are not square. In this sort of realm, you can do four and a half. You can do four by three and a half. That's not an uncommon hinge. You can do a four by five. Okay. You can do eight by six. You can do three and a half by six. You can do five by twelve. It's important to know which dimension is first. Is the bottom line. So uh, this is just a garden variety hinge. Probably going to be something used for an inch and three quarter thick door in a, an environment. That humidity is going to be an issue. I don't know where this is going, except that I know that it's leaving the United States. Um, I don't know what the ultimate country of origin is. Or, pardon me, the destination is. I can see that this client is a uh, it, it, it's a, a, a purchaser on behalf of the military. So who knows where it'll end up? It could end up on a on a military vessel, for all we know. Um, likely not, but it, it could. This is going to include screws. You'll get all, this. Well. This has all wood screws and all machine screws. I was about to say you'll get, you don't count on getting anything. This happens to be packaged with all wood screws and all machine screws. That may be the standard for Stanley on this type of hinge. I don't know, it's not published. I would not assume what screws you're going to get. These hinges are gonna get boxed up and they're gonna get shipped to a suburb of Chicago and then it's gonna get on some sort of transport and go probably to the coast of somewhere and then somewhere quite international and or in destination. The fact of the matter is you don't want to have it go through all those steps. I mean this this hinge already has thousands and thousands of miles on it uh, being made in China. Um, it's you know it's now it's um, so moving a lot. It, my point of all of this is indicate in the comment field what screws you want. You don't want to find out after waiting all that time that I don't have the right quantity of screws. Indicate in the comment field all machine screws, all wood screws, half and half, or let us know what the door and frame are made of, and we'll relay that information to the factory so that they can package the proper screws. There's no reason to assume, uh, and then, um, you know, wh where are you going to get 1224 flathead machine screws in a non-ferrous base material on a Saturday morning? 
you know, undercut head. Uh, these are not thread forming, although they really should be. Uh, you know, where, where, where will you get 12 by inch and a quarter flat head sheet metal screws in a stainless base material now? So indicate, and then you'll be in real good shape. Um, let's switch to the screen view. Let's take a closer look at some of the supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Where might you look to use this hinge? Um, well, it is a confluence of some items that tell me that there's a particular type of client that will end up using this. And what I mean by that is uh, it's probably residential in nature because it's a four inch uh, tall hinge, uh, four inch wide hinge tells me it's probably a standard application. So I, what I mean residential in nature, I mean to say that it's likely not a commercial door and frame. Uh, four inch, four by four would not be typical for that at all. Four and a half, four and a half, four and a half by four, five by four and a half, etc. Larger, taller hinges. Likely a residential application, but one that you're dealing with generally inch and three quarter thick doors. Uh, inch and three eighths doors are not the right uh, door thickness for a four inch hinge. I should say four inch is not the right size hinge for an inch and three eighths door. It's just too large of a hinge. Um, so likely inch and three, most most certainly inch and three quarter thick doors, probably commercial uh, residential in nature. The fact that it is a stainless steel base material tells me that there is one of two things happening. They want, the client needs the base material to be non-ferrous. Okay, Can't rust, coastal corrosive environment, Maybe it's an interior application, and it is a, uh, a, a steam room in a pool enclosure in a hotel. Um, so you'll have stainless steel used in that type of application. Uh, exterior coastal, exterior anything, really. Um, high humidity application, or second and less, certainly less common, but nonetheless um, a valid reason is that someone wants the look of stainless. Satin chrome does not look the same as this. Satin nickel, albeit closer to satin stainless steel, does not look the same as this. Someone might want that exact finish of stainless steel. What's interesting is that they have a, a lacquer coating on this, which I never see on stainless steel. Um, that obviously is standard practice for, um, for Stanley. Um... So there you go. Solid stainless steel hinge used in likely one of those two applications. Now let's dissect the part number so we understand what we're dealing with. We're dealing with an FBB191 in no particular order. That means that this hinge is full mortised. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaves here and here that when the leaves are brought parallel they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. It means it's a five knuckle hinge. It means it's ball bearing on a standard weight hinge, 130 thousandths. It would have two ball bearing packets, as I said earlier. Also means inherently that it is standard weight. The 191 means standard weight. If that was a 199, it would be heavyweight. Um, it also means that it is a, uh, a non-ferrous base material. Th what type, brass, bronze, or stainless, we don't know until we add the finish code to it, but 32D then tells us that it is a stainless steel base material hinge. That's just a stamp on the back that that's an FBB 191 that's there. And then of course the Stanley logo is here as well. Um, four inch is the height. Four inch obviously is the width as well, but the height is the first dimension. So we say that it's four inch tall and four inch wide. Very important to know that the height is the first dimension. Why? Well, it, it is almost never going to really matter that you understand the difference. It's just a four by four. Is it the width first, the height first? It's a coin toss for many people. Me, uh, at one time, I did, I did not understand that the height was the first dimension. Um, this industry is what we call the school of hard knocks. You learn by mistake. Luckily that mistake wasn't too awful. Uh, client ordered five by four and a half. Uh, 20 doors on a job. Two of them were 3670. Oh. Industry standard best practice would tell us doors wider than three foot, three foot, three foot six, go with a taller hinge, five inch by five inch hinge. 
well, I thought the client meant four and a half by five. So he's like, why did you send me wide throw hinges? I says, I, 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 because that's what you asked for. No, I asked for five by four and a half. I thought it was, I thought it was four and a half by five. The problem is the hollow metal frames were already installed, mortared into the block walls. So there's no changing the doors and frames. Turned out that uh, the doors and frames were convertible from standard to heavyweight. We got the client some heavyweight hinges and felt, and the client felt that that would be sufficient. So luckily I got out of that easily. My ignorance over what dimension was first was immediately cured. That's to be sure. Why is it that, why is that the case? Well, the first dimension is probably the dimension that's more important to know, even though they're both important dimensions. What dimension would you want first is more of the question. When it comes to a door, the width is the first dimension. The height is the second dimension. I need a whole bunch of eight foot doors. Okay, great. Tell me the width first and then tell me the height. The height becomes somewhat secondary. 30, whatever the case might be. It's also like saying, I need you to drive from point A to point B Rather than telling you the rate of speed first, why don't I tell you the direction first? That would be the first thing you'd like to know, even though you have to know both pieces of information. Why it's important on hinges, because lots of hinges are not square. In this sort of realm, you can do four and a half, you can do four by three and a half. That's not an uncommon hinge. You can do a four by five, okay? You can do eight by six. You can do three and a half by six. You can do five by 12. It's important to know which dimension is first, is the bottom line. So, uh, this is just a garden variety hinge, probably going to be something used for an inch and three quarter thick door in a, an environment that humidity is going to be an issue. I don't know where this is going, except that I know that it's leaving the United States. Um, I don't know what the ultimate country of origin is, uh, pardon me, the destination is. I can see that this client is a, uh, it, it, it's a, a, a purchaser on behalf of the military, so who knows where it'll end up. It could end up on a, on a military vessel for all we know. Um, likely not, but it, it could. This is going to include screws. You'll get all, this, well, this has all wood screws and all machine screws. I was about to say you'll get, you don't count on getting anything. This happens to be packaged with all wood screws and all machine screws. That may be the standard for Stanley on this type of hinge. I don't know. It's not published. I would not assume what screws you're going to get. These hinges are going to get boxed up, and they're going to get shipped to a suburb of Chicago, and then it's going to get on some sort of transport and go probably to the coast of somewhere, and then somewhere quite international and or in destination. The fact of the matter is you don't want to have it go through all those steps. I mean, this, this hinge already has thousands and thousands of miles on it. Uh, being made in China, um, it's, you know, it's... Now it's um, so moving a lot. It, my point of all of this is indicate in the comment field what screws you want. You don't want to find out after waiting all that time that I don't have the right quantity of screws. Indicate in the comment field all machine screws, all wood screws, half and half, or let us know what the door and frame are made of, and we'll relay that information to the factory so that they can package the proper screws. There's no reason to assume, uh, and then, um, you know, wh where are you going to get 1224 flathead machine screws in a non-ferrous base material on a Saturday morning. You know, undercut head. Uh, these are not thread forming, although they really should be. Uh, you know, where, where, where will you get 12 by inch and a quarter flathead sheet metal screws in a stainless base material now? So indicate, and then you'll be in real good shape. Um, let's switch to the screen view and let's take a closer look at some of the supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are looking at. We have some photographs down below that we can look at. There's the box and the hinge with its screw package. A view of the hinge showing the swag on the hinge leaf. That's what makes it full mortise. If you change that bend on the leaf, you change the hinge. The back side of the hinge, a close-up view of one leaf, then a close, a, a, a more detailed look at the material itself. Then your screw package. Now the extended description tells us for medium weight doors of average frequency, 
All hinges have a template screw hole location for use on either wood or hollow metal doors and frames. We'll see if we can illustrate that in a bit. The term template. That means it'll work on wood doors or, or hollow metal doors and, for, and or frames, um, provided that the doors and frames are prepped for the template pattern of screw hole locations. Again, more in a moment. 4x4 four four standard weight stainless steel base material, 5 knuckle stainless pin, 2 permanently lubricated non-detachable ball bearings, here and here, 130 thousandths, removable pin, that means you can drive that pin out. Uh, should you for some reason need to do that? Well, I would know why you would. You would drive the pin out because when you're hanging the doors, you'll want to separate the leaves, attach one leaf to the door, the other to the frame, and then bring all that together and drive the pin down. That's how I do it. I don't make a living hanging doors, but when I am involved, I that's how I personally do it. Uh, and then 32D, satin stainless steel finish. Being made of stainless, they could also do these in a US 32, which is a polished stainless. Now we have some links over here. Let's look at the cut sheet first. So this is just the document out of the manufacturer's catalog. You have standard weight full mortise hinges. You see these part numbers here. A 179 is a steel based hinge. The 191 can be done in brass or bronze or stainless steel and then you can do all the different finishes on that non-ferrous base material. Being Stanley, they can probably do, you know, two or three dozen finishes when you take steel, brass, bronze, and stainless as options for base material. And then everything here we've just gone over for medium weight doors of average frequency, etc. This table shows the different hinge sizes that are available in a standard weight full mortise FBB 179 or 191. Okay. So that's pretty handy. As I said earlier, you can do unusual rectangular size hinges. Six by five, you don't bump into that often. Six by four and a half, that's a great option if you have an, an incredibly heavy door. Maybe you've got uh, you know eighth of an inch lead and you are insistent on using hinges, which is a bad idea. Um, you should be using pivots for that. Um, you know, six by four and a half should hang that. Now, other links down below. Tech drawing, let's take a look. So this is going to be our template. I used the term template a couple of different ways just now. All hinges have the template screw hole location, and I referred to the document, the technical drawing be the, being the template. So this is the template. It just so happens to be that the location of these holes is what they call the template pattern. So if you have a hollow metal door made to the template pattern, this hinge will fit. You can do four, four inch tall hinges on hollow metal. Uh, you will see those types of applications and three and a half for inch and three eighths doors in hollow metal. Uh, condo buildings along Lake Michigan and Chicago from, you know, uh, Ohio all the way up to, uh, all the way up to Loyola University, those 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 story tall buildings. They're really going to be closer to 30, 40, uh, most of them. Uh, there's only one or two I can think of that are taller than that. But they're full of hollow metal frames. Inch and three-eighths doors, hollow metal frames, hollow core wood, uh, original construction, late 60s, early 70s. You know, yeah, you've got, you've got hinges like this in those frames. Uh, template pattern. So that is the template. Now there's a couple of other documents that are linked to here. Uh, hinge size and installation template. These documents don't really apply. They're there just for review only. So speaking of review, there's a link here to the manufacturer's page. From here, we can view not only all of the Stanley products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog and several other product catalogs. The catalog that I use is this one titled 2010 Architectural Hardware Catalog, and it's because the format of this book is the same as the format of the first Stanley catalog I looked at in 1990. Uh, what I mean to say is I know where everything is in this book. Also, most, not most, a handful of hinge manufacturers have an exceptional encyclopedic approach to explaining hinges in the first portion of their catalogs. Stanley is a leader in that. If you work with hinges at all, 
or if you're just curious, or if you need detailed information about the right hinge to use, you will want to scan through here um, and get to the proper area. An example of that we just scrolled past would be determining how wide of a hinge do you need based on your application. Will a 4x4 work? Does it have to be a 4x5? Will a 4x3.5 work? The formula that's here will help you know what we would consider best practice. You want that vertical axis of pivoting as close to the center of the thickness of the door, so don't have the center hanging out unnecessarily this in this direction. Okay, You want to tuck it back in as close as possible. This formula will uh, help for that. I don't know that a 4x4 is the right hinge for this client. That's what they ordered. I would have studied that and I would have determined whether or not the I would have determined whether or not a four by three and a half may have been a better choice you know if what I'm driving at if the client has no clearance to get around four by three and a half would have been a better choice because you're bringing that vertical axis of pivoting albeit only a quarter inch but you're bringing it closer making it more efficient at what it does scrolling through screw fastener types finish tables, descriptions of different hinges and what they look like and part numbers available. So just on and on. Security options are listed here. Raised barrel, wide throw, hinge swag is defined. You get the point. Electric transfer hinges as well. So let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. In conclusion, this Stanley FBB191 is a very typical and common hinge. We normally see it more so in a four by a four and a half by four and a half, only because you know you see a lot more of this hinge installed in commercial applications. Um, they're sold per hinge. When you buy one, we'll ship you one. They, I believe, they always pack these three in a box. So if you order three, they'll likely come in one box. Um, but they're not sold per box. Stanley almost always includes a sheet of perforated cardboard here. It serves two purposes. The first initially it serves is to literally insulate the hinges from each other in transportation. That's great. But it's, they're also used as shims. These shims can be used to align doors. Ask your dealer for Stanley's shimming instructions. There are actually instructions on how to shim a door. There's actually industry industry publication. Uh, there is an industry publication on how to shim a door. Um, and let me tell you what that is since I've mentioned it. This publication is going to be from the Steel Door Institute, which is known as SDI. I think the document is SDI 122, Installation and Troubleshooting Guide for Standard Steel Doors and Frames. And if you deal, yeah, definitely, there's going to be instructions here on how to shim a door. Um, so the document is SDI, Steel Door Institute, SDI 122. If you search for that, you'll find it. And that document is titled Installation and Troubleshooting Guide for Standard Steel Doors and Frames. Required reading if you deal with doors. Um, if you're a contractor, an installer, or a distributor, possessing that knowledge um, is would be considered mandatory in my opinion. If you have any questions on the FBB 191 4x4 and a 32D finish or any other Stanley product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.